And it's a privilege for me to be among such great thinkers and, and great artists as Ben Ockrey and uh, Lolke, whose creative contributions are in the book. If you haven't seen Lolke's uh, piece, um, The Ghost of Grenfell, referred to earlier, then do find it on YouTube. It's an, ama an amazing piece of work. And my contribution to the book is a poem called Equity, which was commissioned by ITN, Channel 4 News, for their social housing special uh, just a few weeks after uh, the Grenfell atrocity in the summer of uh, 2017. They invited me to write this knowing that I brought two uh, lived experiences to the piece. The first was, was growing up in poverty in social housing myself. A few miles from here, uh, where my, the inner city starts to meet the mill towns of Ashton and Staley Bridge and Stockport over there. My father was uh, an immigrant here from Ireland. He grew up with not much schooling in Ireland to illiterate parents in a house with no gas, no electric, no water, no toilet, no heating when he came over into the hostile environment of uh, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. Um, they lived with my nan where I was born in a rented terrace house and moved to the classic slum that were cleared uh, wholesale uh, in Manchester just uh, around that time. So uh, they moved age 21 to a house with, you know, it sounds like a cliche now, uh, cockroaches, rats, damp, outside toilet. And I, um, I, I contracted rheumatic fever when I was three. I nearly died. I was very lucky to walk away from that and I took penicillin till I was 14. And when I had my heart checked a few years ago, the Indian doctor took his glasses off and looked over his nose and said, rheumatic fever, that's, uh, that's a disease associated with poverty, uh, as indeed it uh, is. Um, the other experience I, I bring, um, not unrelated to that background, was that I then worked in social housing. By my mid-twenties, I was a housing officer just a mile from here in uh, Miles Patton and Ancoats, then the most deprived ward in the country under the index of multiple deprivation whilst living in Harper Hay, which was the second most deprived. Um, so I managed multi-storey blocks. I was responsible for fire safety inspections. I managed caretakers. I saw the uh, tendering process for fire safety and, and I brought that to the, uh, to the, to the piece as well. Um, the poem is called Equity. It's, uh, it starts with the dictionary definition of two meanings of that term. The first being the quality of being fair and impartial the second being the value of a mortgage property after deduction of charges against it. It talks about my background, it ends with a reference to Grenfell and towards the end it thinks about the, uh, the policy context in which Grenfell happened where we see under the guise of austerity we see what is in fact going on which is the ideologically led rolling back of 200 years of working people's progress. And in any, if this book was to be launched in any city other than perhaps London uh, next to the tower of course then this radical city of Manchester, the first industrial city in the world, the first to respond to these challenges of, of migration uh, in, in that modern context and to respond to them with social housing and uh, sanitation, uh, public health and so on, uh, it seems fitting to me. So here we go, equity. They say the swing in 60s, but for most, they never swung. The reality was poverty. Our parents married young and they moved their newborn baby to a rented terraced home where it wasn't the lack of heating that would chill us to the bone. They were the Beatles of a different kind, a classic, classic slum. Kathy come home, pregnant, crying, teenage wasteland. Mum. If they catch cold in the black mould, then the child's in trouble soon. And this child lay there dying as a man walked on the moon, aged three, Rheumatic fever in a damp home but alive with my baby sister crying. I was fighting to survive. I was saved by penicillin, our amazing NHS, and a change in my life chances. From a change in our address, a council home, a tenancy, an indoor loo as well, three bedrooms and two gardens, and as far as we could tell, it was a home for life, respectable, presentable and clean. It was civilised and dignified. My mum kept it pristine as best she could with four of us she'd make do when she'd mend and the neighbors did you favors and we kids played out as friends is that too much to ask for in the britain of today why is homelessness and hopelessness and heartlessness okay who decided that providing social housing can't be done that we won't look after others we'll look after number one and where's this big society is it shrinking like the state? Is it not collectivism that has made this country great? If we will build a new Jerusalem in this green and pleasant land, well then who's the we we speak of? 
Do we fail to understand that we need happy, healthy workers if our nation is to thrive? But most are barely managing and many can't survive with no safety net beneath them or no roof above their heads or their children now lay hungry with black mould above their beds. 400 yards from here, today. In a modern wealthy country, this is inner world obscene, still in poverty in Britain now. 2017, as was. And it has, has to start with housing, social housing, from the Latin, socialis meaning allied. There are other words with that in, socialist and socialism. But of course, that is the target to wrap up our post war progress and to flog it to the market. Always stocks and shares, not housing stock, not sharing, but demeaning. Does it take this council kid to point out equities, two meanings? while they're cutting, 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 cut. But now with people adding, family members to remember in the embers of their cladding, let this be the day we see the way to honour all their names, inequality and poverty, austerity, in flames. 